and welcome to our program. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, part of OU Health. And our program is the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. Um, the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy is a uh, uh, member benefit for members of the Digital Pathology Association, uh, which is offered free to individuals in the developing world. Um, and also to uh, pathology trainees. So if you want to get access to all of the great material, great slides that we have on this, uh, take a look at that and uh, sign up for that. I wasn't paid for that announcement. It's just a, a word of encouragement. So our topic today has to do with the area of GI pathology. And um, this came up in the course of a, uh, a villus tumor that was submitted by one of our gastroenterologists, which was uh, very villus in appearance. And uh, for all intents and purposes, the uh, gastroenterologist thought this was going to be a villus adenoma. So in looking at this, uh, the fragments of, these of this tissue, you can see uh, it does have a very sort of robust appearance and, and many areas where it uh, looks to have some villus architecture. For example, here we can see some rather elongated uh, strands extending up into things. But as we look here, we see a couple of other features that should jump out at us. One, there's a, a lot of mucin, um, and there's a lot of uh, still very uh, <clears throat> banal looking cells with basal nuclei and goblet cells and so forth. So there's not the stratification of nuclei that we're used to seeing. Uh, additionally, the, uh, the uh, surface is kind of rough. It's uh, bumpy and lumpy uh, and so forth. And in addition, as you may notice right here, we've got some deep glands in this process that look a little different, but that are dilated uh, and sort of expanding outward. So, uh, you know, if you were to take uh, areas like this, you begin to see uh, that this looks like a serrated process. Uh, and then uh, noticing here around this uh, little cusp here, you see all these extra little buds here. Uh, so these are something which we'll talk a little bit more about later. These are what are called ectopic crypts. Uh, and this is a very useful feature uh, because these are quite frequent in traditional serrated adenomas and quite rare in uh, the usual villus adenoma or tubular villus uh, tumors. So this uh, combination of findings, the architecture, the villus uh, appearance, uh, should turn us right away into the category, uh, together with this uh, dilatation of the glands in the deep in the architecture, to a uh, more uh, uncommon lesion, the traditional serrated adenoma. So uh, let's just think uh, for a second about lesions that can have villus architecture. Uh, obviously, the most frequent one is the tubular villus and villus adenomas uh, that are the conventional uh, dysplastic lesions that we think of with this architecture. But then the next most frequent would probably be this traditional serrated adenoma, which we've just seen. Uh, but also other lesions like putz jaeger's polyps can have a villus type architecture and even rarely, I think, inflammatory polyps. So that's uh, quite unusual to see that. They tend to have a rounded surface a little bit more frequently. And so let's just look at a couple of these again. Here's another example of the uh, uh, traditional serrated adenoma. Uh, but in this particular case, well, we can see there's nice long villus uh, type structures and they're very busy. They're very filigreed, uh, very uh, branchy and sort of complicated. Uh, and you can see again, these uh, numerous ectopic crypts, these little budding down areas with, uh, oh, some uh, typically some mucin cells right there beneath the uh, surface in that fashion. Uh, the other feature though that we have in this particular slide, and I'll see if I can find the uh, area in question here fairly quickly. Uh, is that uh, this lesion had an area that looks a little different, as you can see, or as you look at this area right here, uh, it looks darker, doesn't it? Uh, and in fact, uh, we go from having these sort of small round oval nuclei to having more conventional pencil-shaped, stratified, uh, elongated nuclei uh, and here you see it very nicely, right back to back. Conventional, uh, non-conventional dysplastic, uh, uh, traditional serrated adenoma, traditional serrated adenoma with conventional dysplasia. 
Um, and that is one of the uh, stages of progression uh, that can lead to uh, uh, invasive carcinoma in this uh, lesion. So identifying that uh, identifies this traditional serrated adenoma as a more complicated and more advanced uh, adenoma, and certainly one where you want they want to make sure they've uh, removed the entire thing. Uh, again, we see some of this deep branching that we see in uh, serrated adenomas uh, that are sessile. Um, and here we do have a little bit more sessile area, but then we see this development here of a more villous uh, convoluted uh, structure uh, as we've noted before. So to compare that with a traditional uh, villous adenoma, here's a nice example. Uh, as you can see this uh, surface, fairly rounded and smooth, but very elongated uh, villous uh, structures uh, as you see here. Now, uh, if your eyes are as uh, adept as they uh, should be, you're probably wondering, okay, what's going on here in the stock? Um, uh, and that can be either uh, an area of invasion uh, or rupture. Here we've got a lot of mucin. Uh, we have cells floating in the mucin. Uh, and so it underscores that these lesions can give rise to mucinous carcinomas. Uh, with uh, without any significant progression to high-grade dysplasia. Um, and so uh, noting that uh, you always want to be uh, on the lookout for uh, evidence of advancement. And here you can see uh, this has extended down in the stock towards the normal uh, colonic mucosa. Uh, in contrast, here's another very uh, villous-looking uh, complex uh, lesion. Uh, you can see the villi here on this uh, lesion, and it's kind of branching and filigreed, and you might go, oh, maybe this is a traditional serrated adenoma, uh, except that uh, this was removed from the duodenum. And so we see here some paneth cells in the crypts, uh, and we see that these look like more typical small bowel uh, uh, villus projections, uh, but it's uh, distributed here in a very contorted architecture that's uh, very characteristic of a uh, syndromic polyp, specifically the putz jaegers uh, polyp. So we see this branching, arborizing smooth muscle here uh, around and between these uh, uh, villus fronds here. This is very characteristic of the putz jaegers polyp. And as this can occur at any level of the uh, bowel, um, including the colon as well. We could see a, sort of a villus type architecture in that setting, uh, although it's much more evident here in the small bowel where the normal uh, structure is to have villi. So just to sort of compare the uh, more common lesions, the tubular villus and villus adenoma with the traditional serrated adenoma, here we universally have conventional dysplasia, whereas uh, in the traditional serrated adenoma, we lack conventional dysplasia. None of those penciloid nuclei with stratification and so forth, unless, as we just saw, you're getting uh, progression of the lesion. These tend to have smooth luminal contours. These tend to have a very serrated, lumpy, bumpy uh, contour of the glands. Uh, these can develop high-grade dysplasia, displacement of glands, uh, invasive lesions fairly early. Um, what we're seeing here is ectopic crypts are very frequent, very rare over here. Uh, and the conventional dysplasias can arise either right or left-sided, whereas the TSA is almost exclusively a left-sided lesion. And high-grade dysplasia is extremely rare in these lesions. So just to show a couple more examples, let's take a look at this case uh, here. Uh, here again, we see this deep glandular dilatation. Um, and some villus architecture with, again, lots of these uh, ectopic crypt formations. Here you see, uh, you know, you could count them along here and come up with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just along this one edge uh, of uh, less than a millimeter. Um, and the lumpy, bumpy, in, indented, outdented uh, surface of these lesions, very bumpy uh, in this manner. Uh, here, a, uh, a more conventional uh, uh, lesion, uh, a little bit of bumpiness here, but I think you can see 
that we've got some conventional uh, dysplasia here. And here we're seeing some high-grade dysplasia, uh, maybe even the evidence of uh, invasion here into the stock. Now, I, you know, I look at this and I'm going, you know, maybe this is actually a, a traditional serrated adenoma that has progressed. So let's look around here and see if this was actually misclassified in the database. Um, so here we do see what looks like uh, conventional dysplasia uh, all through here um, and over here. Uh, again, even though we're seeing a lot of uh, goblet cells here, notice the smooth surfaces uh, and so forth. So uh, these type of uh, ectopic type crisps, which we're seeing here, they might give you pause and cause confusion um, in a few situations because there are a few of them here. Uh, and so it's just nice to remember that uh, you don't have to rely upon that solely as your diagnostic criteria for uh, uh, traditional serrated adenoma, you can get a, a few things that look sort of like that uh, in these uh, tubular villus or villus adenomas. Um, so there's a nice example of some of the overlap uh, features that you might occasionally see, uh, but finding the uh, more conventional dysplasia here should move you towards uh, tubular villus uh, adenoma. Now, just as a reminder, uh, the end product here in terms of cancer is uh, similar, but these generally are following slightly different uh, sequences of molecular events. Many of the same genes are involved, but the adenoma uh, lesions typically begin with an APC gene mutation, then KRAS or NRAS uh, interrupting the uh, uh, RAS uh, GTP cycle. Uh, and then they may add other mutations with SMAD4, TP53, and so forth that impact other pathways until ultimately you end up with an invasive carcinoma. Whereas serrated polyps more frequently uh, tend to uh, devolve first from mutations with the beta catenin gene, the CTNNB1, uh, then to involve KRAS or BRAF, uh, and then subsequently other mutations uh, come into play here that lead to invasive carcinoma. So slightly different molecular events, and so understandably uh, different morphologies, and potentially down the road, different mechanisms of treatment. Well, to close out our discussion today, traditional serrated adenoma was our incident case. We hope you enjoyed that and that it will be helpful to you as you encounter these villous lesions. Um, it's if, it, if you miss the diagnosis, you won't be the first one. Uh, I do recall encountering a... Uh, lesion in a teaching set uh, for medical students that had been mistaken for uh, villus adenoma. So uh, it, it's going to happen to even the best pathologists at time. And if you like this, please hit uh, that subscribe button. Give us a like, thumbs up, share it. Uh, those sorts of things all help to add to the visibility of our channel. And we hope to continue to grow our uh, reach so that uh, more people can benefit from our experience. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.